Welcome to the Nameless Podcast. I'm Aphinius, and this is Kuma, and we're here to talk about anything. So it's been a while since our last podcast, and... You know, I decided to uh, take a week off from the internet. And I know that's kind of, like, what's so great about that, but... Let me tell you, my stress levels and everything are way lower when I'm not, like, even thinking about just internet stuff, internet arguments or anything, or news. When you just unplug from everything, it's pretty eye-opening, like, how just how high-strung everyone is, if that makes sense. You know? What do you mean by high strung? Well, it just seems like everyone just is finding something to complain about. Or they're just... It just, like, takes a snap of the finger and then they start, uh, like, ranting about something or just... It just doesn't take much for people to set them off. Oh. That's what I mean. I guess I just realized that after I spent the past week just, you know, outside, biking, doing some gardening, you know, just reading books, playing games just on my own. I had no idea what happened last week, and I'm okay with that. I don't need to be up to date on everything. And frankly, it's kind of I don't think people need to overall. There's not not that many things going on that you need to be current on. Even current news, like current events. I don't think it's necessary to have to be plugged in every time. I agree. Going off grid give you peace of mind. Okay, I guess that's it. That's all the topics. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I thought you had something else to say, but but yeah, it's been I don't know. It's it's been a nice experience. It's been very therapeutic. I feel much calmer. I'm sure that's going to change once I start looking at things again on the internet. Like I didn't even look at any YouTube videos, nothing like that. Just completely disconnected. Oh, yeah, it was it was nice just being away from the world, just how fast the world can seem, the events of things, just to take a pause and just focus on yourself. It's just been a really quiet and fantastic experience. That just try not to around myself and any of the, the things that could cause me additional stress. Okay. I feel like media take advantage of people's uh, tendency to stress, tendency to not have control, and uh, have them click it. They make the lines, the headlines so like outrageous that it will like, invoke some kind of extreme feelings. I think so, so. What you did, yeah. So what you did is like what everyone needs to do: mind their own fucking business and don't give a fuck about what's going on, and just care for themselves. Like what you done. I think that's what everyone has to do. Just do and some self care. Yeah, and media gotta stop doing that shit. It just, it just seems like, in general, people are just trying to rile everyone up. Or just things in general. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, me, me, a, new, a news outlet always at, trying to like egg on the politician like, hey, why not send some shit over to Ukraine? Like, trying to like push them into the war. Like, get them really involved, not just supplying military weapons. Like, send troops over, have them instigate something that will lead to like, hey, you're actually involved now. We're gonna 
attack you, you know? Every single fucking time. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's It does seem like media is trying to egg people on to get involved in a war. Another war. Got out of one. Of the U.S. and United States, at least. Got out of the war in the Iraq and everything. I think we need to practice minding our own business and just taking care of ourselves and just do that. Take care of ourselves, but also, you know, help each other out. You know, lend a hand. To ourselves. And other people. Well, I don't know about that. If, if you help helping other people, then we have to get involved in Ukraine. I know, I'm just saying. You can't just... You should definitely set, a, set aside time to prove yourself or... Just get the things that you need, the peace that you require. But also, you shouldn't. You should also remember to, you know, help other people out. You know, just your neighbors and everything, your friends, your family, that kind of stuff. So I feel like it's a self-explanatory thing, but I feel like I have to say it. Some people may not understand or not think that I mean that at all. Where I just like just be selfish. It's like no. Like, you do need to be selfish with yourself sometimes. That you do need to help yourself. And it's okay to, <clears throat> you know, take time to do it. And oh. just say, you know, to people, like, hey, I gotta take care of myself. That's what I mean. Okay. Yeah, it's been a. Uh... It's been a great week. I've just been doing whatever, making pina coladas because I never had it, making some mixed drinks, and let me tell you, pina coladas are really delicious. It's and really dangerous, but <laughs> you have too many. I have too many. Like, you, the recipe I found... I could not even taste alcohol in it. I was like, oh, God. I could only taste, like, all the sweet stuff in it. It was just completely hidden. If you just drank, like, like, five to ten of those, and you would not notice that you're just getting drunk. <laughs> For sure. That's why I like my f drinks fruity. So we yeah, I the guess. The alcohol. I, there's some fun in that, but... I cut back already on it because I'm I'm not a huge fan of taste of alcohol like in general. It's just like I don't know how to. It's like bitter, but it's just it's just the taste that I can't get used to, or feels like I can't get used to. It's not something I want to get used to either. I don't want to be an alcoholic. Yeah. Every was. once in a while, I I like mixed drinks, like straight up like liquor and everything, like rum and. Whiskey, that kind of stuff. I'm not gonna take. Like, it has to be good before I even try that. But there was a, a pretty good uh, sake that my brother got from Japan. That it was really smooth, and it was pretty good. It wasn't because some, like I don't know if you've ever had like liquors that just don't go down smooth, but it's just like you just immediately notice it, and it just kind of makes you gag. No, burns. yeah, like there's like burns in your throat yeah. and everything. Yeah, those are gross. Yeah, those I'm are like, gross. Like, I've had some bad uh rums and vodkas, those are terrible. Maybe hate uh, drinking those things. Back in college, you drink the cheapest thing to get drunk. Yep, it tastes some Everclear worst. and all that stuff. I remember uh, people in my dorm get like fireballs and things like that. Fireball. Fireball. Tastes hard. Fireballs suck. It's just like a bunch of cinnamon. Well, it wasn't cheap, though. Uh, I think there was like a pack of six when I was getting some rum for my pina coladas. I think it was like a pack of six for like five bucks or four bucks or something. I don't remember. It was under five bucks. Or it was pretty cheap. That being said, I'm still not going to get fireballs. I tried it once and that was... I just did it for uh, 
think we did it for beer pong or something. Still pretty fancy for college to it. Using that as bear pong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I remember uh, my roommates, they always got uh, Coors Light. Coors Light sucks, man. I hate it. I don't like beers, frankly. I think beers are just watered down and just a waste of time. Like, it's just to get more calories. Like, if I'm going to try to get drunk or something, it's like, yeah, it's cheap, but. It's just a shitty drink. <laughs> At least college kids' choices of beer. They poor. What do you expect? That's true. They're poor and stupid. Yeah, poor. They don't know stupid. any better. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, the pina claws they were good. And then I just grilled a bunch, grilled some uh, some dogs. seafood, some hot dogs, some steaks. Good. Sounds like a good time. Yeah. Making all my neighbors jealous and all that stuff. I'm sure they have their own bar barbecue kit. Probably. Outside. I think everyone on my block has their own barbecue kit, so. Yeah, I know. But they don't really barbecue, so. It's for show. <laughs> it's to, Such it's a to waste. It's like, the, it's like a pool. Like a swimming pool. I see uh, at least half my neighbors have a swimming pool. They never swim in it. For show is to keep up with the what's that term? Keep up with the Kardashians. Kardashians. No, 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 no. That's a fucking TV show. There's like a term they use that you're spending more money to compare yourself with your neighbors just to keep up to compete financially. You know, sounds silly. Just to show off. I've got the proper term for it. It's to keep up with something. It's a last name of some kind of white family. <laughs> No idea what you're talking about. I don't know. But well, anyway, that's what your neighbors are doing. They're just all trying to one-up each other. Like, who got a bigger pool? Who got this? But no one uses it. It's only for show. I guess. Seems like a waste of money. It is a waste of money. They just want to show off their dick, that's all. Let them do that. Uh, I guess. I should just go up to them and just, like, I have... Both my neighbors on both sides of my ha the house I'm in, they both have pools. They never swim in. I, was, I should probably just go up to them and say, like, hey, if you're not going to use your pool, just give me a key and I'll just swim in it. <laughs> just go to your backyard and I'll swim in it. Yeah, that's some good exercise. Yeah. Do some laps. Yeah. Do some laps. Yeah, I, um... I was actually catching up on some older movies and everything. Yeah, what do you Plus, watch? Uh, I was watching this uh, Martin Scorsese, Scorsese, whatever. Uh, his movie called Taxi Driver. Oh, okay. Real with uh, Robert De Niro. Yeah, I know. I know the movie. I haven't seen it though. Can I get through it? What do you think? Is it really slow? Is it? It's. You might like it. It's a uh, the tone of it is really scummy. Like it's the scummy underbelly of like New York. Okay. Like hookers and rugs and everything like that. He talks about it. It's just like, it is. It's, it's a pretty gross movie. Okay. But uh. Well, I, I also watched a movie not too long ago. It's a more recent movie, but the movie makes. It's a bittersweet movie. It makes me hate a lot of the characters. The character there. If you watch it, your stomach turns and gets, you know, angry. Check it out, home. Huh? Frozen. <laughs> no, not Frozen. You mean the anim <laughs> animation? I actually never seen Frozen. That's uh, you're not movie, missing anything. Movie is called uh something Paradise. Let me see. Uh, Paradise. Korean movie. Oh, Korean movie? I'm not gonna know it. I don't watch Korean movies, really. Some good foreign films. Oh. Uh, something Paradise. Some, some, some of that movie. 
Uh, yeah. Well, there was two, uh, one movie we both watched recently, and that was the Batman. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I liked it. Good. I don't know what people were talking. People were like, it's too long. I was like... I mean, it is long. I'm not it's long, long but it I enjoyed the, like every yeah. minute of it, pretty much. Like, I like mm. the... The tone of it, it's just dark and it's just corrupt. And it's like you forget it's about Batman sometimes because it's just, it's just a crime drama kind of thing. Uh-huh. It just reminds me of uh, older crime dramas like LA Confidential and um, Chinatown, those kinds of things. Those were just. You know, it's it's more about the the city itself than actually Batman. Like Batman's in it, but I appreciated that, you know, he actually wasn't an idiot. Not like the other Batman movies where he just beats people up like crazy. I mean he still beats people up, but he's actually, you know, solving riddles and crimes and everything like that. He's actually investigating things. So I appreciated that because I've been waiting for a Batman adaptation in movie form to finally do that. Well, they did it pretty decently. I still have to dumb it down because, I mean, there's only so much you could do with the active kind of thing, like for the general audience. Like, you can't make it too complex, otherwise people aren't going to follow it. But you can't make, you know, if you make it too stupid, then it's just, or just too dumbed down. It's not... It's Hard, it's hard to be motivated to follow it. Kind of know what's going to happen. Which there's some good twists and turns in that Batman, which I liked. Some things yeah, I didn't I expect. Enjoy yeah, I enjoy those too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know you said all this time how much you despise the second trailer with the uh, and you're like I don't know Catwoman whatever. Like, what do you think of Catwoman? I thought she was fine. She was a fine character. She did not overstay. She was strong. Uh, she has cats. She's cat <laughs> things. Like cats. <laughs> um, yeah, she's good looking too. Um, then we go it go into some of her background, you know, I didn't know about. Yeah, I liked her. I think and, she was the best adaptation of Catwoman, in my opinion. Aside oh, from like her. Michelle Pfeiffer and uh Halle Berry, God. <laughs> oh. I heard that movie was really bad. That one's a bad movie. I really saw bad. it back then, but I didn't think it was bad. But then yeah, I was younger. I just you know You tried watching it again, I'm pretty sure you'd be like, This is utter shit. I don't think I'm gonna watch it again. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of time I go I went back to watch things I enjoy in the past and it Never, never, it was never the same. So, yeah, the nostalgia playing that. tricks on you <laughs> as it the always does. The There'll be a story about well, that later on well. about nostalgia in general, how companies did against people. Uh, okay, but I'll talk about that later. But yeah, um, I don't know if you noticed the uh. The Catwoman actress, Zoe Kravitz, she was in Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah, okay. I recognize her. Okay. She's calling uh, Tom Hardy a slanger or whatever. It's... I don't know why I remember that one. That's like the line I remember her from the most. Like, yeah, Sorry, slanger. I, I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't know why I remember that insult. Yeah, I thought she was perfectly... She was good. I liked her. I liked that one. I liked the... Oh, man. I was really comparing... uh, Because the Riddler is in the movie, right? And I was comparing the Jim Carrey versus this one, and I was like, this is very different. This one is very much more menacing. Dark. Mm-hmm. This dude is straight up just murdering people. He's like doing, he's like, you know, he's, um, he's doing it Saw-esque, making all these elaborate yeah, yeah, yeah. traps. Yeah, uh, yeah, when, when I'm watching it, he, that, the, the, and then, yeah, 
he did remind me of the Saw movies and Seven. Movie oh seven. yeah, Seven. I think there was. They did say they were influenced by Seven and such. Yeah, so I, I was really like, wow, this is nice. This is good. He's a really uh, dangerous guy, which I liked. Mm -hmm. Like this scrawny, nerdy guy, but he's just creating all these elaborate death traps, like, after he captures them. It was like, man, they could have easily pushed this into rated R, for sure. It was starting to border on it with a little bit. I didn't want them to. You wanted them to go in R? Yeah, I mean... I think they I mean, could have. But maybe boys, they're trying to cater it more to kids. Because it is Batman. Oh, well, it's Batman. It's like the problem I have with comic book movies. Well, not all of them. I guess the last one, last two ones, the brutal ones were, what, Deadpool and Logan and stuff? So I guess you could do it. Because Log uh, Wolverine is a really popular character. It made him absolutely visceral Logan. That was a very gory movie. Oh, I don't remember. I, I watched it, but I don't think I enjoyed it as much. I, I enjoyed Batman way more than Logan. I think I enjoyed Batman more, like overall. I liked the Robert Patterson as Batman. I thought he was good. You know, yeah, I, you heard, I heard people complaining that... There's like several complaints that I don't agree with. Like one is... Uh, someone was compl a bunch of people were complaining that uh, ba uh, Robert Pattinson, like, too much, like, he's, there's too much Batman, there's not a Bruce Wayne, Is like, that's the whole point of the movie. Like, he doesn't care about Bruce Wayne, he only cares about being Batman. Like, of course you're only gonna see him pretty much as Batman, because he doesn't give a shit about his public image as Bruce Wayne. I don't think Bruce Wayne is an interesting character. <laughs> he's a philanthropist, he does good things, but yeah, if you're gonna watch a Batman movie you're watching it for batman to be honest you know for his gadgets and you know striking from the shadows that kind of stuff you know batman's mmo mm. and yeah that's what you got and i was fine with it uh what's your most favorite scene uh, are we going to spoil spoiler territory or no yeah let's go into spoilers all right what's your favorite i'll make scene? a i'll put it in the title as spoilers um, at how much I liked it, and I'm trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's many scenes. There's a lot like... of scenes. It's a long movie. I liked. Okay, I liked um, like the Hannibal Lecter esque, like Silence of the Lambs, when Riddler is behind bars, and Batman's talking to him. Oh, that. I like their banter because. They subverted your expectations in that because, like, Batman's seeing all these things, like, he sees himself as Bruce Wayne, and he's like, who is Batman? He's like, you think he, f he figured out who Batman is as Bruce yeah, Wayne. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's accepted his fate. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna be found out by this guy. Like, I just... That. And then he just, like, no. It's like, he, has, he was just trying to work with Batman. He's like, he doesn't know who batman's identity is it was a nice uh subversion i liked and i liked the talking between them it was it was tense um i also liked the one of my favorite action scenes was well there's two one was in the beginning when he's the, the, all those like thugs with the white paint on their faces like are beating up that asian dude in the subway like that was great <laughs> Yeah, that was good. And they're like all trying to capture it on their phones, and then he just breaks their arms and everything. I was like, okay. Wait, they took out their phones? Yeah, they were trying they to record him and stuff because they thought he was oh, a weirdo. Oh, okay. They were like recording all their beatings. It was a bunch of dumb kids. Yeah, no way. Right. And they're like uploading on the internet. I went ran once I saw that guy got fucked up. I was like, whoop, no, 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 no. Oh, dude, fuck, no. Shit. Yeah. After he got like beat to the ground, <laughs> I'm like done. Yeah. He didn't get one hit in. <laughs> no, he got his bones crunched. Yeah, that was great. I love that. It was a nice illustration of yeah, he's way. This dude is way more skilled than you, and he will he will fuck you up. Yeah. It set the nice tone of the movie, and also at the at the end when uh, 
all the Riddler like uh, influencers, all the the guys with the guns are trying are starting to gun down all the people in the uh, sports center or that uh, like that arena. And then like Batman just detonates a bunch of bombs in the above, and then just comes crashing down and starts beating them up. It's like, oh, that's classic Batman. Like that was yeah. good. Yeah, there was, there was a lot of talking, which I didn't mind it because it was them. I didn't mind it. it was a, like you could do a lot of talking and you can make it interesting. You just gotta find the nice balance of it. You gotta make it interest, uh, compelling to just keep listening to it and watching what they're talking about. Um, yeah, it was it was mysterious enough and intriguing for me to like continue follow through. Yeah, it was a trail of breadcrumbs for the, these. Brutal crimes, these murders, and I liked. Maybe it's just me because I love Batman and his rogue gallery, but I like the Riddler tr uh, riddles. Where he's just yeah. giving oh, all yeah, these riddles. Yeah. Those were good. That was really good. That was good. I liked it. And then, I think the tense, tensest moment was, you know, in the courthouse, and then the guy has his bomb, a bomb around his neck. Yeah, I like that one. That one was tense as fuck for me. I was like, oh shit. Yep. <laughs> I didn't know when it was going to go off. It was like, is this guy just starts panicking, which he was. Like, when is this going to like blow up in Batman's face? Which it, which it did. Which it did, I yeah. I didn't like the explosion, though. I thought that looked kind of lame. It looked CGI. Yeah, the special effects for it wasn't fantastic. Because like, the explosion is so close to his face, I was like, how he didn't get injured? Like, they should have gotten scratch. burned or scarred or something. Yeah. His chin like, and leave. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing happened. He just got a concussion. He just. <laughs> yeah, um, if it was actually, you know, realistic, it would have gotten way more hurt because he was right next to him. Right in front of him. Yeah. It was like one feet away. Yeah, he was standing right in front of him. That's, I mean, what you get for PG-13. It's not going to be totally realistic. I thought it was really realistic, the whole film, overall. Yeah, I thought it was, too. I, I feel like it's really realistic. I it's feel like this could actually scenes. happen in real yes. life. Like, there was a couple of scenes that I didn't, I wasn't really a fan of. Oh, but yeah? Everything else was good, like this, this, his suit, his equipment, his car. <laughs> I liked his car. It's like a little simple, but I like it. It just it growls. It's aggressive. <laughs> like, yeah, I could see a Batman driving that. Yeah, it's a it's a muscle car with a little better engine. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like a fucking military fucking tank like the other the one. The tumbler. I am uh -huh. so mixed on that. I rewatched the Dark Knight before, like the trilogy before seeing the Batman. Seriously, You're crazy. <laughs> Why would you do that? I haven't seen those movies in like five years or so. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, there's something about those Nolan Batman movies. It's not, it doesn't feel like it could happen, like, in our, in our, uh, reality. Like, a, so mixed on those movies. Like, I appreciated them at the time, but I think they haven't aged fantastic. Like I, I think, it, so. I think what I want from Batman, they didn't deliver. Okay. Like I think this bat, the newest Batman, is what I wanted from Batman movie, which was, okay. you know, a showcase. It was more balanced. Like it showed more of his skill sets. Like it's not just, like I noticed in the Dark Knight trilogy, he's barely a detective. He doesn't. He. He doesn't show like he has the intelligence to design all these gadgets and everything. Like he, you see him do it, but I don't feel like he actually has the intelligence to pull these things off because he relies so much on his uh, Lucius Fox, his CEO of Wayne Enterprises, and who made all these uh, gadgets and everything. Which is true that comics, he does help him with that, but there was a nice balance too because it also showed it Batman in the comics that. He is capable, fully capable of designing these things on his own. 
So I found it very nice in the Batman that he is he has the intelligence to do it. And he also has the in, the investigative nature. Like he he does have intelligence in that aspect. It shows that he is becoming a detective. And he has that deductive nature. Not a moron. Which, uh, the Dark Knight movies always showed, like, it balanced, it went in the other direction of he always just beats people up for answers and everything. He doesn't solve anything on his own. Like, he solves things, but it doesn't, it's too much where he just beats someone up for answers and that's it. Then he just moves on. I think you should balance that a little more. Like, that's what I mean. It's like, I think they had a a better idea of what they wanted to do for the Batman because um, the Dark Knight Rises is such a it's a odd movie. Like watching the first and second movie, I like the first and second movie a lot. Like, you know, Heath Ledger's Joker, he's fantastic and everything. I think all that's great. It's just um, the third movie feels rushed. Like the plot and everything. Like when you think about it, it's it's really dumb. Like why would you make this contrived ass plot to take over the city and stuff? It just it just it doesn't work for me. <laughs> I think they're still solid movies. They're still very good. I think if I had a choice to like which I prefer, it's the uh, the Batman. And I want to see, I want to see sequels of this, like the Batman, like the current cast. Robert Pattinson, I want to see Catwoman again. Like, I think they're doing a good job. I don't know if you've seen the deleted scene. Oh, I, uh, no. But it was, uh, it was basically Batman and Joker just talking. Oh. And it was very tense. It was very good. I was like, I like this Joker, what they're doing with it. Oh, okay. I should check it out. You later. should check it out. It's like five minutes of them just talking, but it's just... It's a very... It's done well. I like it. If he... Vet, the Joker definitely fits this... This universe, like, this world. That they made the movie in. He's, like, creepy. But he's also... He's un, it's unnerving. And you're not sure what he's going to do. Like, they nailed it very well, I think. And it's better than the Jared Leto uh, Joker version, for sure. Um, but I, I didn't watch the um, Suicide Squad. I didn't original. either. I didn't bother. I'm not gonna... <laughs> I don't watch that. I'm not... I've never been into the... Those sets of movies that much. I always thought they were, it could be a lot better. So I just never bothered. But yeah, I, it was really good. I, I liked Batman a lot. It's been a while since I really liked a superhero movie. You can even call this a superhero movie. It's like, I don't know. Like it is, but it isn't, you know? Thriller, crime thriller. Yeah, it's like a crime drama slash thriller more than anything. Mm -hmm. I like. I think I like it more than the uh, third Spider-Man movie that came out a few months ago, Far From Home, No Way Home. You mean the one with all the Spider-Mans? Mm -hmm. That one's okay. It was okay. I liked it. I like Batman more. I liked it, but I was like. Yeah, I think if I wanted to rewatch a movie, I'd rewatch the Batman. Mm -hmm. I mean, I rewatched uh, No Way Home when it came out on uh, Blu-ray and stuff. But yeah, this is fine, but it doesn't get me excited. Like, there's certain like superhero movies and everything that get me excited. But like, oh, I gotta rewatch this. It's like, yeah, this is fine. I saw it once or twice. I'm like, I don't really need to see it again. <laughs> the Batman, I wanna. <laughs> kind of dissect a little more. I want to analyze things in it. I want to analyze okay. some characters and that thing. Like, yeah, I, I want to go over it more. I think the world's more interesting. 
Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Like, like when you see the back signal, everyone either got really scared of the dark. Like, what's yeah, that dude there? got hit by a car and he's freaking out and he started running away. Uh huh. I was like, that's really interesting. I I, I like that. Like, that's what it's supposed to be the signal. Yeah, it's supposed to be like yo. He's like Batman's out. He's he's on the prowl, mm-hmm. hunting. Mm-hmm. You don't know where he's gonna show up. Yeah, they did that really well. The people are just uh, like really looking into that. shadows and are like, "Is he in here? Like, Is he in this uh, alley? Following me?" <laughs> I better not do no crimes tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I liked it. That was yeah, good. I thought that was great. Uh, I think because another reason why you liked it because um, Batman just darker. You know, darker, more mature. More mature yeah. Spider-Man is just Spider-Man's more really cheerful, really happy. I don't mind the time. happiness. Is like, but uh, it's got that like Marvel aspect to it that I don't like. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of high stakes because I feel like in Marvel movies nowadays, I feel like oh, the main character is gonna survive. So yeah. I... Like with the Batman, I felt a, a degree of danger to him. Like, really? like I, I mean, feel human. like I know he's probably going to survive, but I feel like he's he's going to get hurt a lot too. Like he's not going to walk come out of there unscathed, you know. I mean, Batman's human. He got no power. I know he's human, he's but I just I'm just saying. Yeah, in this version, Batman his his suit is basically military gray police gear stuff. Yeah. except for his fucking. <sighs> helmet looks kind of funny i think it's just like a (laughs) leather helmet or something yeah some kind of leather rubbery thing yeah it's not everything else is good though i really like his suit a lot i love Mm -hmm. how his he has combat boots on with some Mm -hmm. kind of pants yeah but you you see that it's not attached in one piece it just comes off yeah i just wish he used that you know those daggers uh darts that that is, is on his wrist he never used it so it was kind of sad that it wasn't used. It was just shown a lot. He doesn't usually use those for fighting. I mean, he could, but he's not trying to kill people. <laughs> oh, he! I'm sure he killed someone. He probably gave them, like, put them in, into comas and shit. <laughs> for sure, man. <laughs> I'm see. sure like, a couple of people fucking die, you know? Like... Well, he, don't forget about the penguin car chase. You know how many people die? I'm sure a lot of people he, die. For sure, penguin killed people. The way he just rammed into that, uh, Oil gasoline gas uh truck and just uh, just blew up and just everyone just crashed into everything. I gotta say, uh, Batman gotta take some thought at this too, because if he didn't chase penguin like that, I don't think penguin will be driving out of control like that. So no, he'd just be driving out. away. He's like, okay. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. he'd be driving away, but he won't be driving away. He was away freaking out because he was like, oh shit, I gotta get him off my tail. Uh huh. So Batman has some fault in that shit. It's a collateral damage, man. Yeah. Yeah, because he was trying to get away. He's like, all right, I gotta stir up all this shit. And maybe he'll stop, or maybe he'll just, you know, stop following me or just die. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he is responsible yeah, Batman, for collateral damage. Batman killed some motherfuckers that night. <laughs> that two nights. <laughs> Probably. Oh, how long it took for him to solve this case? <laughs> <laughs> people die. <laughs> oh, that people definitely died. If yeah. Not immediately, maybe down the road, like you know, end up in the hospital, coma, bed sores, infection, mm-hmm. and then they see dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> You know, I've been wonder, like thinking about it, but if they made an uh, future movies like sequels, oh, who's the next bad guy? I think be? I wouldn't want them to touch the Joker, like the yeah, I think she'll leave Joker. him alone. I think they should try to utilize some, uh, other Batman villains. Yeah, yeah. Like everyone loves the Joker. Joker's a a fantastic villain, and everyone knows it, but. He's played out as hell. <laughs> Every Batman like sh- like saga of movies always has the Joker, which is fine. I mean, he's probably the most well known villain of all time. To- like anything. Mm-hmm. So, what's the second villain number two? Uh, a lot you could do. Like you could do uh, 
Two Face. They did that already twice. They did it. No, they only did it in the the Nolan movies. No, we know no, they, they didn't. Did. No, they also did it in the Schumacher ones. But that Tommy Lee Jones one was so campy. He didn't even know what Two Face was. Well, that actor picked up the job because his son thought it would be cool. Mm. He didn't even want the job. He just mm. did it to be cool for his son. Yeah, he was uh, not yeah, he great did, in he, it. He said that in the interview. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't great in it. Uh, I guess you don't have to do that. I'm trying to, um, you could do the Court of Owls. Nobody's done that storyline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the Court yeah, of Owls? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Because I saw the the animation movie, so okay. that's how I learned about the Court of Owls. So yeah, people said that online that it will fit this uh, setting a lot. Because I think it, it would too. There's like a yeah. a darkness in Gotham itself. I appreciate it because it felt like got like Gotham City was a character in itself, like in the movie. Okay. Did, did they talk about the history and shit? Yeah, they were talking about like the family history, like the Waynes and the Arkham. I think the Arkhams. Mm-hmm. It's just like it's showing the lineage, families and such. Okay. I think they could do Court of Owls because that expands on that more. So okay. then it also showcases Gotham and just like how, uh, like for that storyline, just like how Court of Owls have steered the the people of Gotham to what they wanted. So I think that would be absolutely appropriate for this version of Batman. Yeah. Sounds like really realistic too. It's really like, like hidden stuff of like like hidden stuff like there's a hidden uh behind the scenes group that's clandestine. It's just they were they try to mask themselves, but they also try to manipulate everyone behind the scenes. Mm. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, that sounds good. They're very interesting. What, 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 what would be the villain for movie three, then? Hmm. Poison Ivy and Mr. Freeze. I did that already. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to think of, like, campy villains and stuff, but no. That's, uh... Maybe they should keep it more grounded in reality. Yeah, I think so. Nothing too supernatural or freakish. Okay, so no Clayface. Yeah, that's too No freakish. Mr. Freeze. No Poison Ivy. No. No Man Bat. You know? <laughs> no, 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 no Man Bat. That's a terrible <laughs> villain. God, that's... I can't believe they ever made that stupid <laughs> villain. That was such a... God. Uh... So, oh, actually, I was thinking of um. You get this has started to be like following the trend of uh, Riddler, where it's like homicidal maniac. But I guess there are a bunch of them are. That's like mm-hmm. a crime drama. There's a you could do Hush, you could do Calendar Man. Calendar Man, okay. The Identity Thief. Oh, never heard of these folks. Okay, so well, I'm. I was so into the Batman, I started replaying the Arkham games, the Batman Arkham games. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'm on Arkham City right now, the second game. Okay. Um, so I'm do- investigating a side quest a crime scene where they're calling him the identity thief, where he's cutting up people's faces and wearing their, their faces as masks. Oh, well, yeah, that fits, that fits the, like, the crazy criminal. But it's yeah. also... Uh, this person is dressing up as Bruce Wayne and masquerading as him. Also leaving people's faceless bodies all over the city. Wow. It's that really dark, cool. but it's really interesting. <laughs> there you go. Something for all those fans that say, what about Bruce Wayne? There you go. Bruce Wayne. Yeah, if you want Bruce Wayne, is like, well, someone's stealing his identity and committing horrible crimes. So he's, you know, makes you think yeah. like Bruce Wayne. I don't think it would get much people to dare verse though. <laughs> so that, yeah, that. maybe not. But maybe Batman fans will, will be into it. He's not. more of a... I would say he's more of the well-known ones. Okay. Not like uh, what people think of, like, Joker, Two-Face, Poison Ivy. Those are, like, your freeze. Uh-huh. No, those okay. are the ones that people recognize more. 
I think they should so, do Court of Owls at least for that. Yeah, definitely. I agree with that. That's one of the more popular uh modern Batman stories. Okay. So uh after they finish this trilogy, I want them to work on Batman Beyond. That's what I want. Oh man. That's what I want. Get to babysit a high schooler. Well if you ever rewatched I rewatched this series like a few years ago, okay. this does not hold up nearly as well as people think. Like, oh. this is definitely one of those series or one of those instances where your memories and nostalgia definitely make it seem better than it actually is. I see. Like, there's so much high school bullshit that, like, uh, was it Terry McGinnis? Is that his name? Yeah. Where he just goes through and is just like, I'm going to do clicks and then all the popular uh, preppy kids at school and they're all mutated and stuff. It's like, it's a take on high school bullshit, but it's still high school bullshit. Okay, then if, if that variation sucks, then they could do the spinoff, uh, Batman White Knight or something. White Knight? You heard about that, uh, uh, comic? Uh, no. Batman. Not talking about like the Dark Knight Returns, are you? No, oh, this is a new uh, series, but it involves the Batman Beyond suit. Oh, okay. No, I never heard of it. Yeah, I love the suit. I love the Batman Beyond suit. Yeah, yeah. So, like, if that animation series does not hold up, and maybe you could follow this one. Yeah, okay. Where Terry will be. Uh, a villain he is being manipulated by oh really huh a, he found the suit okay and batman like bruce uh bruce wayne he's in jail huh. break out yeah mm-hmm. uh, yeah i never heard of it interesting okay mm-hmm. uh, oh yeah <sighs> yeah i'm excited for future batman movies if they stick with it. i hope it does well i really do I think it was worth the wait. I know it got del- yeah. delayed a few times, but I think it was worth it. I, I think we already established this. Like, delays is got have more time to work on things. They could finalize things. Rushing never works that well. Sometimes it doesn't matter how much you delay. It's still shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thinking of that Duke Nukem Forever game. That one was delayed and had so many things that still turned up bad. Well, if it if it got rebooted while it got delayed, then that's that's different. Like they changed creative director, changed all these other shit, then that makes sense why it sucked. They try to save something that's broken. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I'm glad we both enjoyed it. It was a nice surprise. I wasn't. I wasn't expecting much from it, frankly. I was like, yeah, it oh. looks okay. But I wasn't, like, super excited about it. Like, yeah, yeah okay. I agree. I think I have the same sentiments as you ever since I continue watching those future trailers. Mm-hmm. And just, yeah, that's just how so I felt. I was like, yeah, these tra- like the first trailer was really good. And then after the trailers, the subsequent trailers, like, yeah, this is, this is uh, making me less interested now. Yeah, I'm glad we were both pleasantly surprised by it. I was like, yeah, this is a this is a good time. Mm. I think they should keep up with this vibe, and I will watch yeah. the next ones. Sure. Maybe th- maybe this is what they this this is what they should be doing with the DC universe. Keep yeah, things for everyone. Oh yeah. man, ah, oh, they shouldn't do that for like a Superman movie. That'd be weird. I mean. I mean, like, if Marvel doing the, all that super, like, crazy, out-of-world mm-hmm. mutation shit, then DC could go the more grounded version, you know? I, th- I mean, didn't they kind of try to do that? Did they? The universe? Well, uh, <laughs> sure? I guess not. They tried to go for more dark tone, which didn't work. You know, remember the Batman dark and V tone. Superman and all that stuff? That's, that story, they fucked it up. It, it, it could have been something. They've just fucked it up. 
they were desperate to catch on, like catch up to Marvel. Yeah, if they had a good storyline, they could have made it work. But they didn't have a good storyline. I loved the uh, the Batman suit. I thought it was really cool. I like how Batman and Superman was fighting. I thought that was cool. But the story did not hold. Like I was like, what am I watching? Like oh I see is explosion booming. Like it gets yeah. old, you know. <laughs> like with this Batman movie, it wasn't that much action scenes. It was pretty minimum. Mm-hmm. But it hold. Like, it was intriguing. It was interesting. I was like, I want to know more. I want to learn more. I want to see what happened next. But Batman versus Superman. I was like, I don't care what happened next. What the hell is this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was bad. Mm-hmm. You need to do story first. Then you do everything else later. You know, I was thinking of, like, what on the Marvel side is interesting like that. Like, Batman advice. I was like, oh, yeah, of course. I've been rewatching all the old Marvel Netflix shows. Like, of course, it's freaking Daredevil. <laughs> that was their best oh, part. Oh, wait, wait. Speaking of Daredevil, they renew. They're re- doing a reboot probably next year. Oh, wait, reboot? Yeah. Not like a sequel? Like no. A reboot? Probably, a, uh, most likely a reboot. Okay, but same actors. Same actors. They're playing to break. Well, they. Uh, how much of the Marvel shows have you seen? Uh,. I got up to the Defenders. That's that's we could stop right there. No, no, no. Like you saw none of the MCU uh, TV shows. What do you mean? Oh, you mean like, oh, you mean like uh, Hawkeye and all that no, stuff. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen Hawkeye. Only one I saw is uh Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That's only that one, one was not great. Yeah, I, I still enjoy it. It was, it was okay. Yeah. It was like average television for me. It was like, but it's like they. Their potential was like, I mean, I have to compare it to uh, Marvel Netflix because those, even the Luke Cage and stuff, I thought was more interesting than Falcon and Winter Soldier. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. I don't know. It's still got that more mature thing, but I feel like the Falcon and the Winter Soldier was like playing grown up. Like they're trying to tackle these adult issues, but it felt like. It didn't feel serious. Oh, okay. I know it sounds weird, but it just it didn't it didn't match the tone of it. Like it still felt like, oh, this is comic books, this is fun and stuff, whatever. But it doesn't feel as mature and grounded and everything that it wanted to be, like Daredevil and such. Okay. Maybe because there's more comedy in it. Like, yeah, there was like, like, oh, everyone's a wisecracker and everyone's making jokes. And it's like this is so weird. Hmm. Why is everyone hmm. making? Why is everyone trying to be funny? Okay, so they rebooting Daredevil to make it fit into the universe. Mm-hmm. So is it still gonna be rated R or? PG-13? That's what everyone's wondering, and I'm worried about because they, if they do... reboot it into the tone of current Marvel stuff, it's like it's not gonna be the same at all. Uh huh. And so they gonna um, do another origin story from the beginning again? Nobody knows. Oh my god, I don't want to watch that shit from the beginning. If they do an origin story, I'm not watching it. Like, uh, unless there's, like, someone really convinces me, like, if they have the, like, I know they're gonna have the same actor as Daredevil, same actor for Kingpin and stuff. But Which is good. I like, that's good. I really like they're always, actor. they're fantastic. Mm-hmm. That's perfect casting for those characters. Mm. But, uh, yeah, nobody knows. I'm worried, frankly. Like, yeah, it's so, cool they brought him in, but they're not, they're not gonna cross that line of making it as intense and dark as the Netflix versions, you know. Like it's Disney; they they don't do that stuff. They they appeal to everyone, like they appeal to kids and everything like that. Mm. I think it would be a shame, just because of the potential you could do. And then I'm rewatching Punisher. I was like, yeah, they can't show any of this stuff with Punisher's freaking violent as hell. <laughs> so there's no way they're gonna bring this version over. Yeah, because I wanna, I wanna know Defenders uh, season. You yeah, know? I was rewatching yeah. Defenders. Like, you know what? I didn't have a great writing, but I had fun with it. Like, it was fun to see him team up and stuff. Yeah, it's just like the Avengers. Like, yeah. each individual movie kind of yeah. sucked. 
Yeah. And the Avengers first movie was great. Oh. <laughs> well, I I liked Iron Man one. They yeah, had all the other movies. Like those uh phase one movies. They were not great. Mm-hmm. At least uh Thor was the worst one. I didn't Thor know. Thor was Avengers. terrible. I did not like that movie. I could barely I I yeah, I could barely get through that movie. Yeah, I'm. I don't know. The Daredevil yeah. reboot is supposed to happen. I think production so is next re- year. They want to do Defenders. Got to reboot every single fucking one again. <laughs> they said they were so open long. to the idea of bringing those actors back in, which I think is fine because I think those actors are perfectly fine in those roles. Jessica yeah. Jones and uh, Punisher and all that stuff. Yeah, it's... It's but a enough, part of me yeah. is just like, it's like, oh, when I was rewatching Punisher season one again, I was like, oh yeah, they're not gonna show Punisher beating this guy's face in and then squishing his eyeballs out and then there's blood everywhere, <laughs> and he stabs a knife through his throat. Okay. They're not gonna do that. <laughs> I liked it. Everyone liked it. It was like, holy crap, this is, uh, this is fucking gory and bloody. But it fits the character. Yeah. I don't know. Those series still hold up, I think. Like, especially Daredevil. Daredevil. It's like, it's the same thing with, like, the Batman, why I like it so much. is like, yeah, there's some, you know, superhero aspects to it, but it's, you know, the thriller and the crime drama and stuff like that, there's more to it than that, you know? Mm-hmm. It has great writing and excellent characters overall. Like, you're compelled. You want to know more and everything. Not just because the main character has superpowers. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. Batman and Daredevil. Up there for me. They're really well done. Because it's not only just about superheroes and what they could do with those extraordinary powers. Yeah, that's what I've been doing for the show wise. Um Yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun revisiting it. And then I compare all the other MCU shows and they've been pretty much all missed for me. I'm not into them. I've been Skipping Moon Knight so far. I was like, I'm not that interested. Oh, I, I didn't watch it yet. So um, it was maybe I'll watch that. it when it finishes the season, but... Okay. Yeah, I've seen WandaVision, Loki, and Falcon and Winter Soldier, and uh, Hawkeye. And uh, I didn't like WandaVision. I thought it was an interesting idea, but then I just lost interest after like the second or third episode. Okay. Um, Falcon Winter Solo I watched, but I didn't think it was good. I think it was okay. Hawkeye was okay, but it lacked. It was the... okay too. I thought you liked that one the most. It's okay, but it's like wise cracking characters and everything. It's like the standard Marvel stuff, so it's very standard Marvel. You're not gonna expect. Different Same. things. If you've seen Marvel things, this is very Marvel ass Marvel. Okay. Nothing okay, that'll that... surprise you if you've seen any of these Marvel movies or anything. Um, the other one I was talking about, Loki. Loki was the most interesting to me, just because uh, Loki as a character is interesting. Um, yeah. And yeah, he's always yeah. been great at Loki. It was interesting having more sci-fi aspects of like time travel and everything, alternate dimensions and everything be in it. But okay. it was okay. I didn't. Or, I think they got a lot of work to do with these Marvel shows, like, and they're just gonna keep ramping up more. I know there's gonna be a She-Hulk and then a Miss Marvel show coming up, and there's. So many of these now. It's like 
you know, if you asked me this years ago, I like I wanted all this comic book stuff, like movies and shows and everything. Also games. No, they're just lacking comic book games. Like barely any comic book games lately. Well, not lately, but for years. And um yeah, it's just overloaded. I'm starting to feel a thing again where it's just like there's too much uh superhero things. It's like I I just like I just don't want to watch all these things. I don't want to keep up to date with all these things I have to. So I might it. just do I might just stick with the movies. Huh? Do it because you like it. You don't do it. You don't force yourself to watch it because it's Marvel. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna watch all this stuff. There's other things I could do. <laughs> there's, there's other good stuff out there. Yeah. I'll probably just stick to uh, a bunch, a few of the Marvel movies. Doctor Strange movie, interesting, but more horror-ish. Kind of, that's what they said. They were trying to go for more horror vibes. That's cool. It's changing up. Yep. I was like, okay, if you're gonna make it do something different like that, yeah, I'm on board with that. Change yeah, it up. Check it out. Yeah, it should be coming out next month in May. Just in theaters, right? Not not online. Theaters first, yeah. I'm not going to theaters for that. I went to the theaters for the Spider Man movie. <laughs> was it was it worth it? Yep. I think it was. Okay. Some of those moments when it's like those old cameos and such is like having the audience around you. And just also feeling those emotions too is like I felt that way with uh, Avengers: Infinity War. Just the reaction of it at the end was like everyone was just dead silence. Everyone was like, "It was very, very cool. Very cool. It was a, one of the coolest movie experiences I've had. Okay. Just being part of an audience that just like, and then it was like afterwards." It, chatting with a bunch of people, just like processing what happened. Cool. I liked it a lot. But yeah, it's um Yeah. Yeah, we've been talking about movies a lot. <laughs> oh man. What do I want to talk about? Oh yeah. This is what I talk about like Nostalgia and everything. It was like, I'm tired of companies and everyone just using nostalgia against people. Because it was an announcement of the World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King, which is the second expansion. And they're doing a classic version of it. So they'll have servers and you can play it again. That game came out in like 2007, 2008. So, so that was the expansion. That was like the game that I played so much in high school back then. I was addicted to it. Like I must have sunk thousands of hours in that expansion alone. Yeah, a friend of mine. We were big, and we were just both big uh, Warcraft and Blizzard fans at the time. And then we played all these classic versions, and you know, the last one they did was last year, and they just kept ramping up, like the time window when they make these things. Like they just released the last expansion for the classic, where you could play the servers again. Old expansions of oh, it's tiring. I was like trying to do all that stuff, and it's like they just overwhelm people with nostalgia. Just like, hey, remember this? Hey, remember this this game you enjoyed back in your childhood and stuff? It's like there's only so much you could take before it just is like, I'm I don't want to keep going down memory lane. 
No? That'd be like if, uh, Square Enix is like, hey, let's make a remake of Final Fantasy VIII. The next year, let's make a remake of Final Fantasy IX. Let's make a remake of Final Fantasy X next year after that. Like, remake? I buy it. Remaster? Probably no, but won't. At some like point, you'll just be like, you'll be exhausted. Like, like, how many remakes can you play of these old things? Or just be reminded of your nostalgia for it? Well, I mean, I'm currently playing Final Fantasy X. You know, uh, so. Yeah, once in I think once in a while is fine, but constantly being bombarded by your company saying, "Hey, remember your nostalgia for this?" Tiring, at least to me. Well, you just need better self control. Don't buy it. Just wait. <laughs> Ignore it. Yeah, true. Well, if I have. Yeah. I'm trying not to let them weaponize my nostalgia. Like, well, I can't be into it if I don't know it exists, you know? Oh, that's why you, that's why you, uh, went offline for a week. So yeah, it wasn't because of this, like, but it doesn't help. <laughs> I didn't hear about it until a friend told me about it. I was like, hey, did you know they're releasing another expansion we both played the shit out of? It's like, oh. No, like cut myself off from the internet. <laughs> How much is charging for this one? Uh, same. Like if you pay the subscription, you get access to it. Oh, uh, okay. So they're not adding more. Like it doesn't cost more. It's just a okay. subscription fee. Well, that's so that's fine. Then. It's f I like that. It's great. But also, well, they actually charging like money again per expansion. No, it's you could do all the expansions. You won't have to pay extra. That's good. Yeah, that's so good. it's basically it's basically um Blizzard putting their own money, making it look good again, so you guys could play if you guys choose to. Mm hmm Yeah, you don't have to download those classic servers and stuff, those old MMO things on it. You can play the modern one. Cool, cool stuff. You got a choice. It's nice. I I still haven't forgotten about Blizzard. <laughs> well, All the shit yeah, they went through. So I keep boycotting them, man. Yeah, I haven't paid for any things. In... Nice. I think it's at least a year now. Okay, so um, they did announce that uh, Diablo Immortal? Immortal has a PC port. Yeah, I heard about that. Free, right. Yeah, it's a mobile game. So. I was just wondering how bad a microtransaction going to be. It's probably going to be loaded to the gills. Since this was originally supposed to appeal to... I know. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Ow. You know, the first thing I wondered was like, okay, it's coming to PC. Does this have controller support? They said that it's the first time it will have WASD. They'll have that, and also they allowed people, if you want to play on PC, you could do it with controller. Nice. Oh, be really that's nice. Seamless. It's just weird. Like, you have this game coming out, and then Diablo 4 is whenever. Like, I don't know. Two Diablo games, like, side by side, just running. Well, you think about it. Thinking of their perspective, which one will make them more more money? It will be immortal because it has microtransaction. It's on home. That means more people could access it easier. Yeah, and it's I free, so. so more people are going to jump on it. And they're going to buy these transactions. Versus 4 is a one-time deal with minimum transaction. Of four expansion. We hope, at least. I don't know. Yeah. We only assume. So, like, thinking in terms of business... It's a smart idea. Plus, it's less resources to make a mobile game. Um. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm not going to say if it is or not, but probably. Yeah. It's, I don't know. Right now, right now, none of this 
I'm not going to resub or whatever, buy these things. It's... I'm still going to stick by my boycott. Yeah, of course. But Immortal's free. <laughs> so the question, are you going to play it? Are you going to play? Play with? I uh, probably will test it out, but I don't think I'll be sticking with it. I don't think I'll stick with it. Because like, I didn't even enjoy uh, Resurrection that much. Oh, Diablo 2? It was really fun in the beginning, and then as I play... Yeah, I enjoyed the beginning a lot, and then uh, the more I played boring. it, the more I go, like, once I got the end game itself, I was like, oh my god, this end game is terrible. I didn't even get to end game. I, I was so bored already. Oh, end game wouldn't have changed your mind about it. Yeah. You're literally... Oh, oh my god, it was so, it's so monotonous. Like, you literally have to... It's the old school way of things. You literally go into a map, rush to the boss, kill it, hope for loot, Log out of the game, make a new game, do it again. Oh, That's that endgame. You just farm bosses like that. That sounds terrible. It's fucking <laughs> terrible. Like, people playing that, it's like, sure. If you find that enjoyable, sure, but I'd much rather play fucking Diablo 3 than that. Like, I'd rather do run riffs and all that stuff. That's way more enjoyable than oh, okay. making a game... Running to the boss, killing it, and then doing it over and over and over and over. And the drop rates are absolutely atrocious in Diablo 2. Like, you could kill a boss over 100 times and never get anything. Oh, that sounds terrible. That's it's like terrible. work. Very bad. Best chance is just trading with people for things. It's a very dated game that I think they should have changed more about Diablo 2, but then the Diablo 2 hardcore fans would have bitched about it. But it that game does not respect your time. You're gonna be spending years. <laughs> you're gonna be spending years grinding for the best loot in that game. No, thank you. I will not play that. I'd rather play Immortal then. Maybe Immortal will adopt some of the Diablo three stuff. Yeah, maybe. It looks more Diablo three. It's more colorful. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So fuck you all, Diablo two hardcore fanboys. <laughs> like I used to be one of you. But also, I recognize <laughs> that fucking game is terrible now. <laughs> nostalgia, man. <laughs> it's nostalgia for sure. People are just in love with that game. It's like, your nostalgia is tricking you right there. I can recognize that's a fucking shitty-ass game now. <laughs> uh, at least you didn't pay for it. Yeah, I'm that's true. Really I paid with my WoW gold. Here. That's why I can't come back. I'll be like, where's my fucking money in WoW? I was like, oh, wait. I bought... Diablo. I bought a copy for you, and then I bought a copy for myself. I got nothing left. <laughs> you can always grind from the beginning. <laughs> oh, God, no. I'm not going to grind in-game currency. I'd rather just make money with a job. Or do that. Pay with real money for in-game money. <laughs> yeah. Bottom line is, fuck Diablo 2. Okay. Cool, cool, <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh man. Uh, how do you feel about Nice of the Old Republic getting a reboot? Oh, that's rematch? right. It is. Uh, yeah, I never played it, so I'm actually looking forward to it. Uh, I don't know what they're changing about. Are they changing the story or? The combat? Oh, the combat, for sure. Okay, they have that. to change the combat, because that combat... That was a weird combat back then, even. It was really? like, I thought it was like a standard MMO. You stand there, you click, and you just watch them... Do it's stuff. based on, like, dice rolls and such. Like, invisible oh, dice rolls. dice roll? Like, Dungeon and Dragon? Yeah. Dungeon Dragon? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. Oh, okay. They have the chances to hit and everything like that. Like, I'm, I'm not a D&D &D player, but... That's what basically it was based on. So that combat is very, very odd by today's. Even back then, it was odd. It's um, they gotta change that combat. I think it's clunky. I think it's always been clunky. Like the only reason I put up with it is because I played it before. I know what to expect, but new players will be like, "What the fuck is this?" And you play like, if you compare Final Fantasy VII remake to this, you're like, "Holy shit." I am not playing this fucking KOTOR game. Yeah, it's, um... I'm curious what they do with the reboot. 
Um, I have an unpopular opinion about KOTOR, and I think that it's a... It's not a great story. I know people are like, this is the, one of the greatest stories ever made. It's like, it's a fucking oh. standard-ass Star Wars kind of story. Oh, I didn't know that. I was getting excited because I never played it. I heard good stuff about it. I like it. It's good, but I think it's completely overhyped. Okay. Like, if you've ever seen any Star Wars movies, it's like a Star Wars movie. That's what it is. Basic plot oh. of it. Okay, so it's not that great. Because <laughs> I, I, I rewatched the first movie. Yeah, it's like... um. Wasn't that great. Like a new hope kind of thing. It's like, oh, the big bad evil empire is about to win. It's like, oh, there's a small group that are trying to fight back. We're gonna, you know, it's that kind of story. Okay. Well, there's some twists, but I mean, the twists are nice, but it still doesn't uh, excuse the fact that its story overall is, you know, seen it in Star Wars or anywhere. It's just, like, if you watch the movie, you've seen it. Okay. Gotcha. It's just in video game form. Now you're in the, you're in control. Control, quote unquote. Yeah, the second game is more interesting. Just okay. The characters and the ideologies of it, and the philosophy of it all, is way more interesting. And I know that's an unpop unpopular opinion for sure. people. Love that first game. I re I know. Some viewers of mine when I streamed the those games, man, they got riled up. They got pissed. Like, well, your opinion's just fucking wrong. I was like, well, it's my opinion. Yeah, I mean, I mean, just be open-minded about it. I say that, but I'd be curious to see what they change about it. It is going to be a remake. I'll be open to it. I'll try to hmm. be as dismissive as I was now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um... You guys are wondering like where we've been. We kind of been off and on playing Elden Ring. Uh, I got a lot of thoughts on those that game. Uh, we haven't finished it yet, though. We never finished it. We're still plowing through it. Uh, I think we're about I don't know thirty forty percent maybe or something. I say a quarter. Quarter? A quarter. You think we're that far behind? If you want 100% the whole map and all the bosses, I think it's a quarter. Yeah, if we we'll just want to beat the game, I think we have. If we just want to beat the game. We're just doing mainline? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Try not to spoil that for myself. Yeah, I know. So I'm just guessing. Um, yeah. They just released the patch. It was 1.04. That was supposed to Supposedly fixed the PC performance. When that game launched yeah. on PC, it was terrible. It had a lot of stuttering, and just frame rate drops, a lot of uh, network disconnects, and we're playing co-op. So I don't know if they fixed that since then. I don't know. I tried playing the game like a couple of days ago, and I tried to summon myself to help people with bosses. Mm -hmm. I, ha I encountered the same issue. I cannot connect. Yeah, yeah, I cannot get into their game. So I don't know what's happening. I wonder if it's the patch that makes made it worse. Or just didn't change anything. It said it was yeah, supposed it was... to improve the stability of online, but I don't know, man. Their patch notes are so freaking vague. They don't explain anything. It was like, oh, we reduced the cast time of these spells. Like, well, okay, how much? I was like, well, I guess you gotta find out yourself. It was like we increase the damage of these things. Like, okay, how much by like you know how much? It's like it doesn't tell you. This is my kind of my problem with from software in general. Is their philosophy of not telling you dick, and then that also really? extends to fucking patch notes. Like they make everything mysterious, even patch notes, which is supposedly to fix things. They're like, yeah, we fixed something. Like, okay. 
gonna tell it's about it or just gonna say it? It's just like, and then it's just mm. silence. Yeah, I'm starting to get a little tired of their uh, not telling the player base much. Okay. Like, I get it for gameplay and stuff. Like, yeah, it's cool. Like, I remember the first time of playing these games. Yeah, it's cool. But after a while, it starts getting tiresome. It's just like, you're going to tell me? It's like, you're not going to tell me what the story is about and everything like that. It's like, be left to interpretation and everything, which is fine. I like to interpret on my own. I think it's fun to do that. But, uh, something I will never say about these games is that From Software are great storytellers. They're not. They make interesting worlds, but they, like, where's the story? Like, they leave little hints and stuff, but that's not a coherent story, you know? Uh. Have these characters you may not ever encounter, which is fine. It makes it for more replayability. Yeah. But the overall story, I could not give a shit about these games, like because yeah. it doesn't feel like these games give a shit about it. It's like they leave you the threads, and it's like, sure, there's a bunch of YouTube videos that have to piece this thing together, and it's like the fine tooth comb is like go reading over every fucking tooltip of all these weapons and stuff like that. But there's only so much you can extrapolate from this limited amount of info from these weapons and items and everything. And it's it's still be based on interpretation. No. It's still gonna be based on okay. So what did this guy say to me? Uh where's the story kind of heading? Where's his boss? What's this boss's link to this? And it's like You know, it's not gonna be concrete. It's harder because uh, we play sporad sporadically and we forget things. Yeah. So that doesn't really help with um, our play. I don't play even know what the Elden Ring story is about. Like, why are we doing this? What are we going for? I don't think this game's told us that. Even in the intro cutscene. Maybe they did, but I don't remember. Yeah, I guess it's... I think, I think it's just the same thing repeated again and again. Like, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, same threads, Bloodborne. Like, same ideas. Yeah, like you just a random guy that stumble upon here, and you just investigate to see what happened next, <laughs> and then you got involved in their shit. Hmm. I think Sakura is the only one that's different. That is not like that. You actually have a goal. You have a goal. You're the the boys protector. The yeah, that has an actual goal. You you actually somebody. Arrow, the rest of the game, you're no one. You, you actually are a character in that world. This, you're just... I don't know. Getting to know the world, but you're... I wouldn't say you're... Eh, you're not like a fully realized character, like in Sekiro. Like the main character. He's... People know him and everything, and he has relationships with people, like... You know? You get... Uh, to understand more what maybe their motivations are in Sakura at least that's why I appreciate it I never finished that game but not my kind of game not my kind of game and it's a game that I completed about 90% of it I know you're so fucking weird <laughs> I just beat it at this point I don't want to go back to it Gotta do all that stuff again. Yeah. But yeah, um... I think it's my problem with... Japanese... Things in general. Like uh -huh. media, at least. Like, there are methods to things, and there are the way of thinking. Um, it extends to anime and manga and all that. They do the same beats, and same things over and over. They're very, they play oh. things very safe. Okay. Okay. I'll give you an example. Like series like Pokemon or Dynasty Warriors and things like that. They do the same things over and over. 
same structure, the same thing. Pokemon, eight gym leaders, three starters. One's going to be a fire, water, and grass starter, that kind of stuff. It's like the same thing over and over, going on for decades. Yeah, I see what you mean. And then Honestly. same with the uh, from software games. Like, okay, you have Demon Souls, Dark Souls, Dark Souls. I'm not even going to include Dark Souls 2 because that wasn't the same guys in charge as the other ones. Uh, Dark Souls 3, Bloodborne, like the same kinds of structure. So, I mean, they change things here and there, but it's still overall the same experience. It'll be a hard game. These boss fights and everything is, you're going to die, you lose your souls, or whatever, you know, all that stuff. Those, now I call it trappings. Because it's, it's things they're known for, but also things that it feels like they have to do now. Because it made like them so well known. Yeah, I mean that's what that's their niche. That's the company. That's what they know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. I I get that. It's just you know it could be a personal thing, like whether you want to keep doing playing these kinds of games. And you yeah, know, as for me, to be one of yeah, it's like so as for me, saw. it's my opinion, but <laughs> I think they're they become very stagnant. Like they become very true. stale. They need that's new ideas, true. a lot more new ideas than just open world or speeding up the combat a little bit or adding a jump button finally i i agree that's true it's true like when i compare it to other souls like games now like combat neo neo 2 is way better combat wise than any of the souls born games it's more interesting more depth and there's more incentive to keep only wanting to fight because you have a loot system. You know, loot system, that depends if you really want to grind out for loot. Like, there's sets and everything, but you know, if you really want to do that, that's subjective. I was like, you could be okay with it or not, it's fine. That's not a... I wouldn't say that's a good thing sometimes. Sometimes she's like, I just want to play the game where, like, my... My skill and ability isn't based on what the quality of loot. I wouldn't say that's a good or bad thing. It'll depend on you. But also, um, we're Enix. Final Fantasy games. Final Fantasy XIV, too. They followed a very similar structure for a long time. Like, same combat style, like ATB gauge, that kind of stuff. And they start changing things up in, like, uh... uh... 12? Yeah, kind of 12, where it's more MMO combat. And then, obviously, yeah, Final Fantasy 15, where it's more action, beating it up. Yep. You know, you're doing more, and then, obviously, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, even more action. Mm-hmm. So they are changing it, but they they change things very slow. Like it takes them many years to finally just start changing things more drastically. Um, this is my problem with the Japanese culture. It's the Japanese culture by itself. Is it really? Yes. I already gave you one company that does the same shit. Who is that? Ubisoft. Okay, they do that too. I'm I'm not saying it's just Japanese, but it's something I notice when I'm playing all these Japanese things. And it's not just their games and everything, but it's also their animes and mangas and things like that. It's like it's very the same thing over and over. It's like I, I'm not gonna say it's only Japan, but something I noticed because I've been playing a bunch of Japanese things. <clears throat> But yeah, it's Ubisoft. It's fucking terrible for that. <laughs> like the same damn uh, Far Cry games and stuff. Mm -hmm. Assassin's Creed. Do you yeah, know they're... They, uh, they, they're failing? They're trying to get sold now? They're trying to get sold, really? Mm-hmm. Hmm. They, they did so bad. I mean, they're real ass games. They can't support themselves. They're trying to sell themselves now. They're very uh, toxic company. Yeah, that's probably another 
been a part of why they they've gotten a lot of bad press. And yeah, it's the same old, same old. I'm gonna take a small Ubisoft tangent, but God, I hate them for making so many damn open world games. <laughs> also, for fucking over Division Two. Division Two was like a very cool idea. It was different from the rest of the, all the other games that they released, and they didn't stick to it. Oh. Yeah. And then they made that uh, oh, they made those bad ghost the ghost recon. Wildlands yeah. and the yeah. what was that other one? Work. We tried that demo. We were just like, "This is shit." Yeah, it was, it was ghost. Uh, it was um, breakpoint. Yeah, breakpoint. That was it. So they're shutting it down the servers and stuff, and they were selling NFTs in it too. Yeah, they're doing too much. <laughs> Ubisoft is one of the worst game companies, big game companies. I mean, I guess they're all pretty bad. It's just on a, on a scale of how shitty you want they are. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. It's like, um, back to my point about Japanese games. Like, even a game that I enjoy, Final Fantasy XIV, they take so long to change things, too. What do they change? Like, combat systems or things like that. Oh, they changed that? Mm, was it now? No, I'm just saying, like, people have a lot of uh, suggestions and everything. I'll put it more nicely. Oh, okay, suggestions. Like how they can improve the combat and everything, and then they... I'm not saying you should always listen to your user base, because sometimes they're just wrong. Or they, they're not thinking of overall direction of they're only thinking what they want. But they don't think they're not thinking, you know, people are not thinking always of is this going to satisfy everyone overall? Or is this gonna satisfy that one person? That's small group. Out. Oh, it's also about money. Oh, it's about money, sure. Yeah. But they're doing so well now. I think they may be surpassing I don't know. Maybe surpassing World of Warcraft subscriber numbers now. Oh, okay. They're doing incredibly well. But you gotta keep in mind, they also bombed, too, on their other games, so they kind of bounced out. I think we... Yeah, we did talk about this. The other games were, like, Outriders and... Uh... Oh, oh, oh for Outriders, they released a new expansion. Aren't they? So they're still supporting it. I haven't kept up to that game since we played that demo. So, maybe we wait for a sale as a bundle and it maybe i had fun with it apparently everyone didn't like it but the two of us liked it well we came from playing division that's true we came hot off the of heels pace. it was it was a change of pace of humor it wasn't that serious it was actually pretty funny at times the powers were pretty cool so like we also came from playing remnant so we had the powers oh yeah that's true yeah, and we also played here. a little bit of um what's that called that game What's that fucking game called? First person. Uh, Destiny. Yeah, Destiny was powers shooting. Pretty, you know, it 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 was more serious, but it, that the 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 setting is similar to Outriders. Like it's kind of space sci-fi. I'll be truthfully honest. I enjoyed Outriders in that demo more, way more than Destiny. <laughs> Destiny is shit. It's fucking. That's what's pretty boring. The shooting Destiny's was pretty tight. boring. Was I like the boring. shooting, but. I do not like the loot. The loot is boring. Loot system? Oh. Yeah, I don't think it's good. And I don't think the content in Destiny... Plus, they fucking... The way they handle content in Destiny is so bizarre to me. Like, once they release a new expansion, they cut off the older expansion. You can't access it. They do that for Final Fantasy XIV when they reboot it. Is that things they actually remove from the game? Well, yeah, but I mean, that was a straight up re a reboot of, you know, base game. They don't do they, they don't do that for exp every expansion. This one's like, okay, so the last, the oldest expansion, we're just going to cut that content out. You know how crazy that sounds? 
Maybe they should just call it a reboot of Destiny. They're gonna call it reboot after a, every expansion. <laughs> That'd be I like mean, six reboots, or however many uh, expansions they have now. But yeah, it's... yeah. I mean, maybe when average goes down to below ten bucks. <laughs> No wait, I'm fine with. I still, we still got everyone on really despises that. Either we have shitty taste, or everyone's just hating on that. I don't know. No idea. It wasn't that bad of a game. But yeah, back to Elden Ring. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're still playing that. We should have more thoughts once we. You know, in probably about five years of this, right? If I continue to insist on doing everything. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. It's some standard ass Soulsborne experience. Like, okay, the open world is pretty neat, but this is the problem. The problem I had, some general thoughts. The problem I had when I first heard about Elden Ring is, like, oh, it's open world. The problem with open world is... Distract you from the main game? Kind of, yeah. It's kind I of like the problem I had with uh, Skyrim. Like, I did the side shit, and then I forgot about the main story. Uh -huh. uh, I never finished the main story, because I didn't give it a crap. <laughs> main story... Well, Short, very short little Skyrim tangent. I thought the Skyrim main story was incredible. And not a game overall. I don't I'm not a fan of Skyrim. I was more yeah. of a fan of modding that game than actually playing it. Oh. Yeah, I bought it too, but I never I think I only got like maybe two percent of the game that I, that I dropped it. Mm-hmm. It was more fun seeing people's mod creations. <laughs> but yeah, I think after, I mean, I'll I might change. I'll bring this point up again after we do our have more informed Elden Ring views mm -hmm. after we finish it. Uh, right now I'm feeling like. I don't want to play a, another one of these From Software Soulsborne kind of games. Yeah, take a break. Yeah, I think I might skip the next one or wait till it's done super deep. I'm not going to play it at launch. I mean, I'm sure no one's going to buy for you, okay? So you're just going to wait like everyone else. <laughs> Probably that... not. Uh, yeah, it's. I wasn't expecting much from this game, and I was still kind of let down. So far, I'm just like, this is, uh, people calling this a masterpiece, and I'm not seeing it. This is, this is far from a masterpiece. This is a very average at best game. I think there's some cool, I think, okay, I think the best parts of that game are the legacy dungeons. We're in Castle, like, where the main story and stuff is, like, I think that is prime, Soulsborne, design quality and everything. Feels really fun to explore. But the stuff outside of that. Like, there's some cool parts. I don't mind exploring some parts. But, uh, they do a lot of, uh, copy and paste bosses and not a fan of that. Very lazy. Ugh. Lazy. Maybe the world just too big. Maybe they can make it a little smaller. I think they should have made it small. When people are like, oh man, I could explore this vast world and I've seen those stories. And it's like, oh okay, I guess you don't mind seeing the, like the this boss for like the fourth time. I guess that's really exploring the world, huh? <laughs> You're talking about the bear? <laughs> yeah, there's like that. those so bears points. all over the place that used to be a boss. Now they're just literally just copied and pasted everywhere. Like, uh, that's, 
That is not fun. I don't know. It's very, very, very iterative and lazy game to me. I think lazy. people call it masterpiece comparing the games that re re released around the same time. It just outbeat everything else. I guess it's if you compare it to an Ubisoft open world game, this game is way better. <laughs> I'll give it that. <laughs> I'm have, I'll have more fun with this game than those. That's not a high bar. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it felt. I felt like any other Souls boring game from from software. Yeah, that's how I felt. Just some standard fare. I still enjoy it, but I enjoy it, but it's nothing that nothing that was nothing that I haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the thing. I it's think they should me. take a break from these kinds of games, like making these. <laughs> Well, like I said, like 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 people have been talking about some people. Maybe the next game will be a a, a reboot, a revisit of their previous uh, entry. Like Armored uh, Core. Yes. I think that'd be uh, interesting. I'll, I'll Don't be make fun. it like a Souls like experience though. It, Armor is Core it? Is I never I never played Armored Core, so I don't know. You should check it out. It's, it's not bad. Was it like a PS1 game you or could something? You actually jump because you could fly. Okay, so that makes it infinitely better than Dark Souls. Mm, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, minimum story. Um, you okay. There's a stamina bar, if you think about it. The bar will be the, your energy bar. Oh, okay. But you can't, like, continue. Like, how are they going to do a stamina energy. bar with a, a mecha kind of thing? No, oh, it, it already exists. I just never thought of it that way. Okay. You have an energy bar. You can only hover and jump for X amount of time. You have okay. limited ammo. Once you out ammo, you're done. You gotta hmm. fight things a different way. So it's still resource management. It's still energy management. Hmm. Okay. I think so, they should do that. But just go back and revisit it. Yeah. Using whatever they learn and make it even better. Yeah, like revisit just like they did with Sekiro. It's like, hey, I want to do kind of the Tenji S kind of thing. Yeah, they could just do that. I I look forward to another Armor Core game because I have the last one I played was back in the PS2, and I can't even find one for the PS3. It mm -hmm. was really rare and really expensive. No, mm -hmm. I think they should do that. I th I think more itself than me. I feel like they ran out of. Uh, fresh new ideas for themselves making these games now. Because a lot of these enemies are like seen these before in older Dark Souls games. Yeah. I don't know if they ran out ideas. I think they're just reusing assets to save. Yeah, they're them. definitely reusing assets. Like out of all these games, this game is reusing assets the most. Yeah. I well <laughs> I guess if you include the uh Older Dark Souls, games. Dark Souls two and three. Those reused a bunch of assets from Dark Souls, Demon Souls, I think. Huh. I guess it's nothing out of the ordinary for that. Financially smart. Yeah, they save a lot of money and time. I don't blame people. Like, it's fine you reuse that. Whatever. I mean, playing through sequels and everything i see it all the time now like playing through sequels like arkham city and stuff they're using a lot of the animation assets and textures and everything and the engine from arkham asylum which is the first game is fine mm -hmm. i think that's fine i'm not against reusing assets if it saves you time so you can make make cooler things happen with it make improvements on those things just when you do it so frequently, it's just like you can't ignore it anymore, or you can't just excuse it. Just, God, you're, you're, using, you're using these assets all over the place, and it's like it's not even like their first few games anymore. It's like what their sixth to eighth game now at this point. They'll be using these same assets from like ten plus years ago, or however when those Demon Souls and Dark Souls. Yeah, you're right. It's just, I think six six games already. <laughs> yeah, and you're reusing wow. across like past six games, and you're still doing the same things. Like, come on. Wow, it's crazy. 
I'll say more. I mean, I already said a bunch, but. Yeah, that's my final thoughts on that right now. So we're going to keep playing it. I'll give it a fair shake. We'll keep playing to see if they change it up anymore. It's better if it yeah. wow you. Mm hmm Oh yeah, that's it about it. I don't know if there's anything else you want to talk about. Mm, nah, save it for next podcast. Okay. Hopefully, you got something to say this time. Yeah. All right. I guess that'll do it. All right. We'll see you guys next time.